All right, next we have two bills that will help strengthen our waterfront and protect our water supply. Intro 507A reconstitutes our city's waterfront management advisory board. The sponsor, council member, Ben Kalos, and co-prime uh, co sponsor, council member, Debbie Rose, the chair of the committee on waterfronts. The waterfront management advisory board advises our city on the most effective ways to revitalize and protect our waterfront and coastal communities from the impacts of climate change. Of course, the most important voices in the planning process are those of the people who live in these areas. That's why public engagement has been central to our waterfront planning from Edgemere and Queens to the east shore of Staten Island. But we believe we can further deepen public participation in our efforts to improve our waterfront. And we are pleased that this bill expands membership of the board to include 18 members of the public appointed by the mayor and the speaker. They will include representatives of local community organizations and advocates who want to see greater development along the waterfront, including things like more affordable housing and more recreational opportunities. Through one NYC, we've already made great progress across our city's 520 miles of coastline. We've begun half every half hour round the clock Staten Island ferry service. And you can Staten Islanders can clap for that. And we're investing in a new citywide ferry service. We're creating the Brooklyn Queens connector to connect more neighborhoods to more jobs. And we're reinforcing and protecting public housing in flood prone areas. As we build a more sustainable, resilient, and equitable waterfront across the five boroughs, we'll be counting on the voices of New Yorkers to help us. Next is intro 446A. This bill will help to protect our harbor water from oil and natural gas waste. It bans certain oil and natural gas related wastes from being released into any surface body of water in our city, and that includes our rivers and bays. It also prohibits using such waste on any city road or real property and in any city landfill. The sponsor is Councilmember Steve Levin. Waste created from oil and natural gas production, including hydrofracking, is a threat to our environment and health. So there's no place anywhere in our city including the water we drink from and the roads we drive on. To be clear, the city of New York already doesn't use these harmful byproducts for anything that we do, including snow removal or de-icing. And why New York State's hydrofacking ban was necessary to preserve our city's water quality and infrastructure, this bill will further protect our water from toxic chemicals. I want to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito our Department of Environmental Protection Acting Commissioner Vincent Sapienza, uh, Department of City Planning Director and New York City Planning Commission Chair Carl Weisbrod, the President of the Economic Development Corporation Maria Torres Springer, again the Chair of the Committee on Waterfronts, Councilmember Debbie Rose, the Chair of the Committee, uh, the Committee on Environmental Protection, Councilmember Costa Constantinides, and now I'd like to introduce Dan Zarilli, the Senior Director for Climate Policy and Programs for New York City and our Chief Resilience Officer. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. Our waterfront has seen so much great change over the last several decades, and we continue to invest in things like Citywide Ferry to make sure that our vibrant coastal communities continue to be more vibrant uh, and promote more economic development and job activity across the city. Um, but as we've saw, seen from things like Hurricane Sandy, those vulnerabilities on our coastline are just as, uh, are, are growing just as much. And we need to make sure that we have effective waterfront management in order to continue to promote the right policies. That's what makes today's uh, bill signing so important, is that we are expanding and reforming the Waterfront Management Advisory Board to bring more voices into the mix to help advise us on these programs, to really diversify the voices that come in uh, from all of the communities that are on our, across our waterfront. Um, these reforms are going to continue to help us to make the right investments, complementing our 1NYC investments where we're spending over $20 billion to prepare our city for the effects of climate change and do that in a way that uh, complements our neighborhoods and it integrates into the neighborhoods that we hold so dear. So I want to thank the mayor for his leadership, the speaker, uh, council member Callis and Rose for their leadership and the countless city um, employees all over the agencies uh, that are working tirelessly to continue to promote our waterfront and prepare for climate change. Uh, and we look forward to um, uh, to implementing the, the, the bill and reforming the Waterfront Management Advisory Board in cooperation with the Council. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
And now the sponsor of Intro 507A, Councilmember Ben Kalos. Thank you, Mayor. Good to see you, too. The Vision 2020 New York City Comprehensive Waterfront Plan is now only four years away. In the wake of coastal flooding from Sandy and rising sea levels from climate change, it's high time that we reconstitute the Waterfront Management Advisory Board, affectionately referred to as the WMAB. It's a uh, forum to connect city agencies with federal, state, and multi-state agencies, as well as industrial, commercial, residential, and recreational stakeholders. Among its missions is to protect millions of New Yorkers living along 520 miles of shoreline from climate change and to keep New York City on course for the future. Once signed, Introduction 507A expands its role and significance and once again makes it relevant in deciding how New York City protects and manages its valuable shorelines. The reestablished WMAB will assist and advise the city in producing regular plans on the development and management of the waterfront and track progress toward established goals. I'd like to thank Mayor de Blasio uh, for signing, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for her vision, Waterfront's Chair Debbie Rose for her leadership and co-sponsorship, New York City's Chief Resiliency Officer Dan Zarilli, uh, DCP Director of Waterfront Planning Michael Morella, as well as Mac Walb, Alex Polinoff, Chris Sartori, my Legislative Director Paul Westrick, and uh, our strongest advocate for our waterfront, Roland Lewis at the Waterfront Alliance. Thank you. All right, thank you. And now the sponsor of Intro 446A, Councilmember Steve Levin. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for welcoming us to discuss this important legislation today. I am proud to sponsor Intro 446A, a bill to protect New York City communities from toxic pollutants and safeguard our water, a natural resource that we all rely on to survive. This is the first municipal legislation in the nation that comprehensively bans the use of dis or discharge of natural gas and oil waste products, including from hydraulic fracturing. These waste products pose significant dangers to public health and to our environment because they contain naturally occurring radioactive elements, carcinogens, and other chemical additives used in hydrofracking. In order to prevent harmful pollutants from entering our wastewater treatment plants and making their way into our waterways, this bill prohibits their application to real property or landfill located within the city and makes it unlawful to use toxic brine in city road maintenance. I want to thank uh, the mayor, uh, Acting Commissioner Vincent Sapienza and, and of DEP and Commissioner Catherine Garcia of the Department of Sanitation. I want to acknowledge uh, Deputy Commissioner Eric Landau of DEP, as well as City Legislative Affairs, especially John Paul Lupo, Rick Rodriguez, and Nick Howey. I would also like to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, my colleague, Environmental Committee Chair, Environmental Protection Committee Chair Costa Constantinidis, as well as our ex excellent legislative division, Laura Popa, Ed Atkin, Samara Swanson, and William Murray. I am further grateful to my staff, Julie Barrow, Lisa Bloodgood, Edward Paulino, and Jonathan Boucher. I have been honored to work with a team of dedicated stakeholders to build momentum around this bill, especially Ling So of United for Action, Mary Ann Sullivan of the League of Women Voters, Sean Dixon of Riverkeeper, Alex Beauchamp of Food, or, Food and Water Watch, and many more. A clean environment is essential for our health and safety, and it's critical that we take bold steps to protect our precious natural resources for generations to come. And I just want to acknowledge the great work that DEP does in protecting really what we have is uh, the best drinking water in the entire country. And uh, it, is, it is such a valuable thing, and, uh, and I really uh, tip my hat to their uh, continued vigilance and, and great work to protect that resource. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we have public testimony. I'm going to call up three people to the microphone over there. Ling So, uh, Sean Dixon, and Roland Lewis. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Ling So, co-founder of United for Action, a grassroots environmental advocacy group based in New York City. We are very excited about Intro 446A. This bill will ensure toxic and radioactive fracking waste is never accepted in New York City wastewater treatment plant, landfill, or used on our roads, thus protecting all the people in New York City from being exposed to the harmful effects of fracking waste that could contaminate our air and water. We hope this will send a strong message to our state and federal governments to follow the example of New York City 
to protect the public health of our people. This bill is the result of the collaborative effort of members of City Council, their staff, and many grassroots advocacy groups. Special thanks to Council Member Steve Levin and his Legislative Director, Julie Biro, Chair Costa Constantinidis and his Legislative Director, Nick Wazowski, City Council Legal Staff, Samara Swanston and Bill Murray, and a very big thank you to many dedicated volunteers of the League of Women Voters, Riverkeeper, Grassroots Environmental Education, Damascus Citizens, Food and Water Watch, United for Action, and many other advocacy groups. By listening to each other and working together, we can enact legislation that will benefit our people and our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Sean Dixon from Riverkeeper. With today's bill signing, we're uh, once again faced with the fact that New York City is one of the greatest cities at putting its waterways its people, its environment, and everything that we protect from Jamaica Bay to our drinking watershed first. That's going to protect us and our future generations. And it really is something that sets a high bar uh, for the rest of the country, for cities and states around the United States, to take this municipal ban on the use and disposal of all of these toxic and radioactive uh, waste products of the oil and gas sector and keep them out of our environment and away from our people. Uh, we look forward to the day that New York State follows our lead and enacts a similarly comprehensive ban across the state. Uh, and I'd like to thank the City Council and the Mayor for passing this bill today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilman Kalos, and in absentia, Chairman Rose, I want to thank you for uh, reinstating the Waterfront Management Advisory Board. Uh, I think a new robust board will be a great tool for the city to uh, address uh, Great, uh, probably the greatest opportunity the city has, I, I think, uh, our harbor. Still, I think we're scratching the surface. I think in a generation's time, people will move to the city because of its harbor. It's a, it's a mo place where, for education, as you've led us with, for, tr for greater transportation, the citywide ferry service, I think, is a game changer for education. Uh, the Billion Oyster Project is a great example of that. There are so many th things that we can use this harbor for that we haven't yet, and for, for jobs. It's, it's an economic development engine. And it's also our greatest challenge, of course, as you both mentioned before. It's an existential challenge in climate change as coastal city has to deal with it. So having this brain trust with you to, through the Warfare Management Advisory Board to help your agencies, uh, officials like Dan Zerilli, Michael Morello, and many others, to come up with solutions and to look beyond. We, 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 our organization, many other organizations, look all around the world. I'm going to Scotland in a, in a few weeks to talk about other waterfront leader, with other waterfront leaders. I'll bring back ideas. And uh, there are many other organizations that will have that kind of reach to inform uh, the policy of this city and this region. So again, thank you for uh, uh, making this uh, board a reality again. And uh, we hope to be helpful as we can. Thank you very much. And now let's sign the bill.
Okay. You have Till the bitter end, I like that. It's my honor. Oh, it's very kind. Okay, here we go. Last, we have a bill that makes a technical change to Local Law 57. Intro 1194 clarifies the responsibilities of youth baseball leagues, a topic near and dear to my heart, with respect to defibrillators. The sponsor, Council Member Stephen Matteo. Local Law 57 of 2016 requires defibrillators at baseball fields leased from the city or 